Hello, I'm Mr. Dahmas. This is the first of a series of courses for third-year pupils' literary streams. Through these courses, we will help you get ready for the back exam. We will revise vocabulary, grammar, morphology, and pronunciation related to the themes dealt with throughout the year. As you know, the world has witnessed the rise, development, and collapse of a large number of ancient civilizations, such as the Sumerian, the Egyptian, the Chinese, the Greek, the Roman, the Mayan, and the Phoenician. You have probably guessed that our course today will be about ancient civilizations. In today's session, we will deal with vocabulary, grammar, and morphology through activities often suggested in the back exam. Hello, Mrs. Ben Khalil. Hello, Mr. Dahmas. Which activity have you prepared to help the pupils acquire the keywords related to ancient civilizations? Our activity today, our first activity, is an MCQ, a multiple choice question. Let's start. As everything on Earth, civilizations appear, grow and develop, and then gradually lose power and force. Finally, they disappear and vanish. We are going to study a number of verbs that illustrate this movement. Look at the picture and the drawing, which expresses the action conveyed by the four verbs, emerged, spread, declined, and collapsed. This will help you do the activity. Choose the right answer to get the synonym of each verb. The first one, emerged. Is it appeared, bloomed, or matured? Right, it is appeared. Because bloomed and matured are synonyms of spread. The second word, spread. Is it vanished, expanded, or rose? Right, it is expanded, because vanished is a synonym of collapsed, and rose a synonym of emerged. Let's move with the third verb now, declined. Is it flourished, evolved, or fell? Good, it is fell, it's a synonym of fell, because flourished and evolved are both synonyms of spread. The last verb, collapsed. Is it a synonym of started, developed, or disappeared? Of course, it is disappeared, because started is the synonym of emerged, and developed a synonym of spread. Now, let's recapitulate all these verbs. Classify the verbs we have just studied in the following table according to their meaning. Some of them express the beginning, others the development or the fall and the end of the civilization. All right? Let's start with the beginning. The verbs that represent the emergence of and the beginning of civilizations are emerged, appeared, rose, and started. Good. Those which represent the development are bloomed, matured, spread, expanded, flourished, evolved, and developed. Only two verbs express the decline of a civilization. They are declined and fell. And the verbs that correspond to the end are vanished, collapsed, and disappeared. That's all for our vocabulary exercise today, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ben Khalil. The second part of our lesson today deals with grammar. We will see how to ask questions in English. Some pupils find difficulties in asking questions. Is it really difficult to ask questions in English, Mrs. Ben Khalil? Asking questions seems to be difficult, but in reality, it is not. You will see if you follow our course today. Let's start. Study the following example. Ancient civilizations tell us about our ancestors. 
What's the function of the underlined words in the sentence? Write, object. What is the question word we ask when the question is about the object? When the question is about the object, the question word is what for things and who or whom for persons. When you have found the question word, focus on the verb. Which tense is it? Good, present simple. Which auxiliary do we use to ask a question when the verb is in the present simple? Right, we use do and does for the third person singular he and she and it to ask questions in the present simple with all the verbs except with to be and we will see this later. The question then is, who or whom do ancient civilizations tell us about? Now, fill in the gaps in the chart to get the structure of WH questions in the present simple. Question words, plus the blank, plus subject, plus the blank, plus the rest of the sentence, and the question mark. Let's correct. The structure of WH questions in the present simple is the following. Question word, plus do or does, plus the subject, plus the verb in the infinitive without to, that is the stem, plus the rest of the sentence and the question mark. Pay attention, there is an exception to this rule, as in the example, ancient civilizations tell us about our ancestor. What do the underlined words refer to? Right, they refer to the subject. When the question is about the subject, we don't use do or does. We just replace the subject by who when it is a person or what when it is an object. So the question is, what tells us about our ancestors? You notice that the verb in the question takes S because we usually ask the question about the subject in the third person singular. Now let's move to asking questions with the verb to be. The Egyptians are proud of their ancestors. What do the underlined words refer to? Right, they refer to the object. Here the object is a person. So our question will be, who or whom are the Egyptians proud of? What did we do to get the question? Yes, we did an inversion between the subject, the Egyptians, and to be. So, with to be, we get the question by making an inversion with the subject. And we do the same with models, as in the following example. We must preserve our cultural heritage. The question, what must we preserve? By the way, we do the same with other tenses like the future, present perfect or past perfect because these verbs are composed of an auxiliary and a verb. So we just make an inversion. It's easy, isn't it? Let's move now to asking questions in the past simple. Consider the following example. The Egyptians buried the pharaohs in the pyramids. What do the underlined words refer to in the sentence? Good, they refer to the place. So the question word is about the place, right? So when the question is about the place, the question word is where, good. Now focus on the verb. What tense is it? Past simple, right? Which auxiliary do we use to ask a question when the verb is in the past? Right, we use did to ask questions in the past simple with all the verbs except with to be as we saw in the present simple. The question then is, where did the Egyptians bury the pharaohs? Now, fill in the gaps in the chart to get the structure of WH questions in the past simple. Question word, plus blank, plus subject, plus blank, plus
plus the rest of the sentence and the question mark. That's correct, right? The structure of WH questions in the past simple is the following. Question word plus did plus the subject plus the verb in the infinitive without to plus the rest of the sentence and the question mark. Remember, there is an exception as in the present simple. This is when the question word is about the subject, as in the example. The Egyptians buried the pharaohs in the pyramids. The, the, the underlined words are about the subject. So the question will be, who buried the pharaohs in the pyramids? Here, we don't use did as we did in the present simple. Let's move to the practice now. The first activity is ask the questions that the underlined words answer. The Phoenicians built trading posts in North Africa about 3,000 years ago. The land near the Euphrates was fertile. Hieroglyphic writing began 5,000 years ago. The first hieroglyphics were found on buildings and tombs. The pyramids remind us of the glory of ancient Egypt. The Phoenicians were nomads. Let's start correcting our exercise. The Phoenicians built trading posts in North Africa about 3,000 years ago. The underlined words are about a duration. The question word will be how long ago. The verb is in the past simple. So we'll finish the question with how long ago did the Phoenicians build trading posts in North Africa? Second sentence. The land near the Euphrates was fertile. The underlined word is an adjective. So the question is how? The verb is to be. Don't forget that we make an inversion. So the question will be, how was the land near the Euphrates? The third one. Hieroglyphic writing began 5,000 years ago. The, the underlined words are a subject. They represent something. So the question word is, what? Remember that we don't use did here because the question is about the subject. So the question is, what began 5,000 years ago? Sentence four, the first hieroglyphics were found on buildings and tombs. The underlined words represent a place. The question word will be where. The verb is to be. So remember that we make an inversion with the subject. So the question will be where were the first hieroglyphics found? The five sentence, the pyramids remind us of the glory of ancient Egypt. The underlined words represent an object, and it is something, a thing. So the question will start with what? The verb is in the present, so we'll get the question. What do the pyramids remind us of? The last sentence, the Phoenicians were nomads. The underlined words represent the subject and they represent people. So the question word will be who? And the verb is to be, so our question will be who were nomads? This was our first activity. Now we'll move to the second activity, which is a dialogue completion. You very often have this type, this type of activity at the back exam. Let's start. Complete the following dialogue. First, read all the dialogue. The Egyptian language was written in hieroglyphics. It consists of pictures and symbols. They began to use the system of writing around 3000 BC, which is before Christ. Well, on monuments, temples, and tombs. Let's start now, sentence by sentence. The Egyptian language was written in hieroglyphics. Which question can we ask? How was the Egyptian language written? Good. Let's move to the second one. 
It consists of pictures and symbols. What does it consist of? Good. Third one, they began to use this system of writing 3,000 years ago. Our question will be, when did they begin to use this system of writing? And the last question, well, on monuments, temples, and tombs. So the question will be, where can we find these writings or hieroglyphs? That's all for our grammar activity, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ben Khalil. The third part of our lesson today deals with morphology. You have certainly noticed the use of words like achieve, which is a verb, achievement, which is a noun, and achievable, which is an adjective. Mrs. Ben Khalil, is there any specific rule on how to derive words in English? Unfortunately, there are no specific rules, but with a little practice, you can get ready for the exam. Let's start. Achieve is a verb, achievement is a noun, and achievable is an adjective. Now we are going to do an activity in which you will see other words related to today's theme. Let's start with the first activity. Complete the table as shown in the example. The example is, as Mr. Dahma said, achieve, achievement, and achievable. Notice that sometimes you are given verbs like die, believe, threaten, and change. Other times you are given the nouns, as in development, glory, invasion, and danger. And the last part, you are given adjectives, civilized, evolutionary, conquerable. Let's do the activity now. Die, noun death. Adjective, deadly. Second one, belief. Belief, believable. Third one, develop. Development, developing. Sometimes you can have two adjectives. We can also have developed. Next one, civilize. Civilization and civilized. Evolve, evolution, evolutionary. Glorify, glory, glorious. Threaten, a threat, and threatening. To invade, invasion, invasive. To change, a change. As you notice, sometimes we have the same verb and noun, and changeable, the adjective. To endanger, danger, and dangerous. And the last one to conquer, the conquest, and conquerable. That's all for our lesson today, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ben Khalil. We hope that what you have learned today will be of some help. Thank you for your attention. Next time, we'll go on with ancient civilizations. Goodbye. Goodbye.